Hello, uh, my name is Gus Cairns. I'm one of the editors at AIDSMAP and I'm here with Liz Heileman, who is uh, an, an, a medical journalist and one of our um, trusty writers, and also with uh, Dr. Andrea Savarino of the um, National Institute of Health in Rome in Italy. And we're here to talk about a very uh, potentially extremely exciting study um, that will that is being presented at the AIDS 2020 conference, uh, was presented today. Um, and um, we may, may I stress, and uh, um, uh, Andrea is going to tell us about how sure they are about that result, have seen um, a cure or at least a long-term remission of HIV um, in a patient using a relatively simple drug regime um, and not one of the sort of high-tech cures we've seen before. Liz. Okay, um, well, thank you, Dr. Severino, for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, now, I understand the man in your, in your study had, he had established chronic HIV infection and he started a standard three drug antiretroviral regimen, um, and then he, he entered a, a HIV cure study and was given um, some, additional, some additional treatment. So do you want to describe what his intensified regimen was like? Yes. He received dolutegravir and maraviroc in order to increase the potency of uh, art in uh, uh, anatomic uh, centuries where art uh, may not penetrate completely. And uh, in this, uh, the goal of this intensification was to render um, the efficacy of art as close as possible to 100 to 100 to the goal of 100%. However, this is very difficult to be measured in vivo. When it gets so low, right. Mm. and uh, the goal of the intensification. Then the patient was given as an experimental drug nicotinamide. Nicotinamide is uh, an experimental drug that is being used in uh, cancer, in particular for uh, prevention of the recurrences of uh, non-melanoma skin cancers, and it has also given some promising results with uh, melanoma in mice. Um, the reason for uh, its use in cancer is that it boosts the immune system, in particular the, the effector immune responses. And uh, um, meanwhile, Ricardo had uh, been conducting some studies showing that uh, uh, nicotinamide may act not as a real latency reversing agent, but as an agent able to promote, to, to favor HIV escape from latency. Thus, uh, tilting the balance between the productive infection and the latent infection towards the former. So it sounds like nicotinamide has, um, maybe works by multiple mechanisms? Yes, it works by multiple mechanisms. In this case, it is very di difficult at the moment to ascribe to one particular mechanism of okay. nicotinamide the result obtained. It is also very difficult to ascribe to any of the drug interventions the, the um, result obtained because it might simply have been a favorable uh, circumstance of the host virus interaction. Why don't I back you up and uh, give us a brief sort of overview of, of what you found? Okay, during therapy, the patient showed a decrease in uh, some uh, markers of immune activation that are, in general, uh, an indicator of uh, the chronic stimulation of the immune system by the ongoing viral replication of viral blips. Uh, meanwhile, the, the patient at the end uh, of the treatment showed an undetectable viral DNA. Uh, the viral DNA is a sort of a measure of the viral reservoir within the body, although it is not uh, the optimal marker. Right. But uh, um, it may give an indication of uh, the size of the viral reservoir. Okay. Then after therapy suspension, the virus did not rebound. The viral DNA was maintained negative. 
and the um, CD8 counts were maintained at uh, an acceptably high level. Um, what is noteworthy at the moment is that the antibody response uh, decreased over time. If the antibodies de decrease, it is possible that the virus has stopped its replication. So you basically put him on a dolutegravir-based regimen, and what were the other drugs? They were uh, Trovada and uh, um, Epabirens. Right, so fairly standard regimen with intensified with dolutegravir, then you also give him a which you hope stops the spread of HIV from cell to cell in another way, and then you add in uh, nicotinamide, which was one of several experimental drugs you tried during this trial, um, you used other ones as well. Um, the indicators um, of the presence of HIV in his system um, became so low or non-existent that you thought it was worthwhile um, taking him off his antiretroviral therapy altogether. And so far his viral load not only hasn't bounced back, but he also shows he, he also the in antibodies against HIV have disappeared. No, the, the antibodies haven't disappeared. Oh, they the have. antibodies have decreased. Decreased, so. And he is still being monitored in order to understand whether, whether the antibodies might disappear as in the case of uh, Mr. Timothy Brown. Which certainly seems to indicate that there's a a very low or no HIV material in his system to stimulate the presence of antibodies. Sorry, it was not Truvada. There was a tenofovir, but there was 3TC. What were his side effects like with taking all those drugs? Did he have more side effects than you would expect? And, and what are the side effects of nicotinamide specifically? Yes, okay. So the, um, during this trial, only mild side effects were, uh, were seen. And uh, the majority of the side effects uh, were likely to be due to an interaction of uh, epavirant with uh, doltegravir, which uh, can give uh, nightmares uh, and uh, some um, psychological disturbances. Right. These are well-known effects of epavirant anyway, so... They yes. A bit into, a bit into and uh, the... Um, there was no real side effect found for nicotinamide, but this is in line with uh, the studies that have been conducted in cancer. Um, however, I would recommend strongly to the HIV-infected population not to take nicotinamide in a non-medicalized uh, setting, because nicotinamide is, in any case, a drug that may promote glycolysis, and might, in some ways, um, create some problems in glucose metabolism. Thus, uh, outside the clinical trial, its administration is, at the moment, not recommended. So they could get some, like, pre-diabetes kind of? Yes. No, yeah. no, no, the contrary. Hypo uh, okay. Oh, glycemia. Right, okay. As for the other four patients who were on the same regimen, no, there was no significant difference as compared to the patients who had undergo, undergo, undergone uh, intensified art alone. Mm -hmm. um, thus, for this reason, I would like uh, to emphasize that this case is extremely interesting. It, uh, I really hope that it may boost further research into an HIV cure, mm -hmm. because it is the first time that uh, such a uh, a condition is seen, to my knowledge at least, in a, a patient under um, chronic uh, HIV infection mm -hmm. and without having been subjected to a life-threatening medical procedure such as bone marrow transplant. Yeah, However, this is a, a, a very first experiment and I wouldn't um, uh, for C V on that. Okay. So are the other four patients, did they have a rebound or you just haven't yes, followed yes, them yes. long? Yes, they did. Yes. Okay. What else do you have to do? Um, what other tests do you have to conduct on this patient? Um, and uh, before you can 
really say we think this is a, a case of cure or at least a case of very long-term remission. What else are you um, doing? Okay, we have uh, uh, done a, a test of viral cultivation so far, which has been negative. However, I wouldn't rely that much on this by now because uh, uh, there might be rare latently infected cells uh, somewhere. Thus, the, what we plan to do would be to repeat the viral cultivation on different time uh, intervals mm -hmm. and uh, maybe uh, take uh, some uh, samples from uh, some uh, anatomic uh, reservoirs and measure the viral nucleic acids there. We were planning to do more for the international for the international conference on AIDS. However, COVID nineteen has taken everybody by surprise. Uh, unfortunately, uh, both Italy and uh, Brazil have been uh, high, hardly yeah. struck by yeah. the virus. So he hasn't, yeah. had his, um, he hasn't had his his like gut tissue or lymph nodes measured yet. Yes, no, no, and but this is what we would like to do. However, those patients were strongly advised not to, to go to the hospital during the right. period because uh, in order not to expose uh, themselves uh, mm -hmm. to COVID-19, and um, it would have been uh, easier without, uh, unfortunately, SARS-CoV-2. The medical modeling that we have uh, presented, um, however, is also compatible with uh, a prolonged viral control with uh, increased uh, effector responses, also without uh, the complete negativization of the, of the reservoir. Right, so you, you, you have a sort of, you, you, your figures indicate that something um, profound has happened to these patients, but it's not, as it were, a complete cure as yet. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So to summarize, um, it's very exciting. Um, and the most exciting thing is that we were all thinking that if we were going to cure somebody of HIV, it had to be by, as you say, very toxic means like a bone marrow transplant or very high tech means um, like gene therapy that we haven't really, um, you know, satisfactorily made work yet. And here is someone who may, may just uh, have been cured or at least put it to a long-term state of remission with a fairly simple uh, regime of existing drugs. Okay, so what's your message to the community? I gather, uh, you've already said, please don't go out to the pharmacies and start buying uh, nicotinamide. So, uh, first of all, I would like to recommend, uh, of course, not to take nicotinamide without uh, being involved uh, in a clinical trial. Yeah. Second, Nicotinamide might uh, not be the drug that uh, has uh, induced uh, the long-term remission. Or, but but it, it, this would be a very interesting case to study because nicotinamide uh, might be substituted by more specific interventions. We are also going on with uh, studies in basic science regarding the interaction of uh, nicotinamide, cell metabolism, and uh, the viral reservoir. So might that, that, that would include other human trials, newer human trials of the same sort of concept? We haven't decided yet. However, what I can say is that still experimentally, uh, nicot the dosage of nicotinamide can be increased because uh, there are ongoing clinical trials in cancer and uh, it's uh, been uh, shown that it's uh, well tolerated. To, con to connect it back to the, to the question of, uh, that Liz uh, asked me, however, there is, uh, um, nicotinamide can have side effects, one of um, the most common uh, of which is uh, the so-called niacin flush, the, um, skin uh, reddens, it might cause diarrhea, some hepatic problems, so everything should be uh, treated with extreme caution by now. Thank you, you spent half an hour talking to us, which was really nice of you to spare, spare your time. So to summarize, this is potentially a very interesting result, um, uh, using a relatively um, simple regimen, but it's a one-off. Um, he's the only patient in the group of five that this happened to. Um, and uh, it will take a long time um, before we can find that. Well, it will take some time before we find out if this 
really does resemble a cure state in this particular patient. And we need to repeat it in order to find out whether that it, this is a regime that might work for others. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Dr. Andrea Severino. Thank you, thank you very much Liz, for joining me on this, on this call and uh, exciting times. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.